Me and these games have a lot in common. We're both on the spectrum. So what in the hell is a ZX Spectrum? And yes, it is Z because it's British in it. The Spectrum was a budget computer by Sinclair released in 1982. Now in the early to mid eighties, the big main computers of the time were IBM PCs, Apple II, Atari 8-bit, and the Commodore 64. And in the USA, those were your main contenders. But in Europe, it was a whole different ball game. They had their own computers on top of those that we didn't get like the BBC Micro, the Amstrad, and of course the Spectrum. And yes, I know about the Timex Sinclair. Those barely made a dent in the US, so they don't count. The Spectrum was meant to be a budget-minded computer and costed way less than most other computers, including the C64, which was already cheaper than a PC or an Apple. How did they do this? Well, by cutting corners. The Spectrum had a lot less horsepower than its rivals using a simple color palette and what was basically simple beeps of audio, which to be fair, Apple and PC were still using at the time, while the C64 was melting our face with awesome SID chip tunes. The Spectrum would finally get a proper sound chip in an upgraded model, but what most people had was the bog standard little rubber keyboard box. Yeah, rubber keyboard. I bet that's about as fun to type on as those old VTech toy computers with the little membrane keys. In fact, Sinclair's previous computer, the ZX81, had that exact kind of keyboard. Yuck! Now, I wouldn't be talking about the Spectrum unless it had games, right? Well, the Spectrum had thousands of games, and the main way of playing them was on cassette tape, just like the C64. However, unlike the Commodore, you could use any old piece of shit cassette player that you had lying around to load the game. One less peripheral that you had to buy, and that's always nice. Could you imagine having to buy a proprietary cassette player just so you can listen to one specific album? I watch enough tech moan to know something like that probably exists. The good news about the tapes, though, is that instead of taking 20 whole fucking minutes to load like a C64, a Spectrum could do it in four minutes, which is about as fast as a C64 floppy disk. Man, loading games back then sounds like hell. Think about buying a game you've never played before and loading it up for five minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, and after waiting all that time and finally playing the game, turns out the game sucks. Now you've wasted all that time loading a piece of shit game, and you're out 10 pounds or roughly $20 in 1980s money. But it's loaded now, so you might as well play the damn thing. Makes me think of my young self renting NES games and having a shitty game for the whole weekend. I played plenty of those LJN games. Man, movie games were such a scam. The Spectrum had plenty of those too, and it's a good way to start the review. Here's Robocop on the Spectrum. <laughs> Robocop on the spectrum. It's like he's socially awkward and can't really talk to people, but he knows literally everything about Pokemon or something. See, I can make those jokes. I'm autistic. I know what it's like to be the sad man. Oh, for fuck's sake, it's that Dilbert song again. Ranch or Cool Ranch, creep. Serve the public trust. Protect the innocent. Uphold the law. Now the first thing I noticed off the bat is, man, this game is stiff. And one could make the argument that he's a robot, so his movements are supposed to be stiff? Well, one could make the argument that you're a jackass. Overall, this game plays like if Contra was very slow. There's nothing really to the game, you just go to the right and shoot. And I think the trick is you need to duck and shoot every time. But the controls are so unresponsive, you'll be lucky if you can get Robocop to duck. Then you got these karate guys kicking you in the face and these chainsaw guys that take a million fucking hits. And by the time you get turned around to try to shoot them, they're already sawing into you. What's aggravating is the enemies walk the same speed as you, so you can't get away from them. If you can survive long enough, you'll get a new gun that kills everything in one hit and then hits whatever enemies are behind the enemy you shot at. But when you run out of ammo, it's right back to the regular gun. Ah, oh, crap, two chainsaw man? Come on, guys, leave me alone. Fuck! Well, shit. I cannot get very far in this game at all. This is the first fucking level, and I can't get halfway through it. And every time you die, it takes you right back to the start. Overall, I wouldn't buy this for a dollar. Not even 69 cents. Next, we've got Manic Miner. Okay, I can think of about 50 jokes I can make about the word miner, and 50 of them will get me in trouble. So instead, here's the best music you've ever heard in your life. Well, it's still
still sounds better than Pink Floyd. So in Manic Miner, you collect all the items on the screen and head to the goal. And you gotta do it before you run out of air or hit something. Hit what exactly? Weeds! You can die from touching grass. That sounds like half my fan base. And did you notice I died from touching a weed that was on a completely different platform? I just went through the platform and then hit the weed. That's good game design, man. And then there's this asshole over here who's going... Let me introduce you to a saying that I came up with specifically for British platformer games. Brits can't jump. British game developers in the 80s were physically and mentally unable to code a decent jump mechanic in a video game. They couldn't do it. It really wasn't until Super Mario Brothers came along that people realized you're supposed to have full T total control over the character while it's in midair, which is something none of these British platformers ever had. Also, there's fall damage. Fall damage in a platformer, that's great. I wouldn't give this game to somebody I hated. I'd give them retarded creatures in caverns. I bet you weren't expecting to hear that today. With his beloved ring now safely back in his possession, Bulbo vowed never again to pursue the art of boggling and turned to the gentler pursuit of reading the Goblin Gazette. It was while engaged in this activity that he first chanced upon the leaflet that would introduce him to the joys of RC and C. One day as Bulbo idly flicked between the page three elf and the sports results, he happened upon a small leaflet announcing the start of something called Retarded Creatures in Caverns. Now never being afraid to try something new, he soon filled in the form and sent it off, along with some of his precious gold, to the address at the bottom of the leaflet. Two days later, a small jiffy ba- I'm not reading all this shit, damn. Oh no, is this a text adventure? It is, boo! Uh. Alright, time to find out what works. Go to castle. Maybe later, but not now. Open door. Easier said than done. Could you please give me one straight? Straight answer? Go north. Algy couldn't find no way past the tightly closed door. Okay, open door. Oh, you mother. Something stirred in the depths of the moat. Look at moat. What the fuck? It took me back to the start. Okay, examine moat. Hey, now we're getting somewhere. Examine door? Use door. Ah! Jump in the moat. Easier said than done. Hit self. Fuck you! Algy oh, didn't know how to! Get that retarded Dragoosie! Examine self! Algy saw nothing special. Oh! Algy's been taking that depression himself, eight. Examine castle. Built many years ago when the skies are full of dragons. Its twin towers stood proud and tall. Damn, dragons did 9-11. Go to castle. Enter castle. Open door. Go through the door. FBI, open up the damn door. Fuck. Algy didn't know how to. Well, that's a you problem. Well, that was Retarded Creatures and Caverns, everybody. What a great game. I'll give it a three out of 10. The Evil Dead. Okay, video games haven't been kind to the Evil Dead series, and this is no exception. It's a top-down game where you run around in the infamous cabin killing monsters. I guess that's supposed to be Bruce Campbell, and I guess this is a swing? Man, you really gotta use your imagination for these games. You run around in the cabin until your energy goes down, and once it does, you lose a life. So Sometimes you pick up an item and I have no idea what it does. Maybe it gives you a sense of accomplishment. There's other people running around in the cabin and I have no idea what they're supposed to be. Maybe they're zombies or the doppelganger Bruce Campbell from the movie? But that'd be giving the game too much credit. Besides, I was Evil Dead 2. Also, this keeps happening. Whoa! Seizure warning! Get out your glow sticks, it's the evil rave. They really much to say about this game. You just run around, kill monsters, and that's it. It's weird to think that this game probably took months to develop back in the day. But somebody could make this in Game Maker Studio in a day. What's sad is Evil Dead would never get a decent video game. Every video game that ever had Evil Dead on it sucked. Maybe one day a game will come along to break that curse, but I ain't holding my breath. Okay, so here's a game called Elite, and it might be the most complex and confusing game I've ever played in my life. It's less a game, more of a spaceship simulator. It has an open world, tons of planets to go to, and I think you like buy supplies and then sell them to other planets for a profit. I think it's a money-making system you're supposed to work with. So textiles, I guess we'll get one. Radioactives, uh, one. 
Slaves? I guess the South won in the Space Civil War. And apparently a human being is worth as much as a textile. But hot damn, you know liquor's an arm and a leg. It costs more than the radioactives, dude. It costs less to build a nuclear bomb than it does to get hammered. Guys, if there's a game out there that makes me feel like a stupid person when I play it, it's Jeopardy and this game. I have no idea what's going on or what I'm doing. You know what's worse? I can't find a manual for this game. I found something, though. Apparently the game comes with an overlay which shows you what all the buttons do. And I did find this guide which was a little bit more helpful. And I was actually able to start flying. I still have no idea what I'm doing though. I'm basically driving blind right now. Maybe I'll find another ditch to flip upside down in. If you're wondering what all this stuff on the bottom is for, me too! So after a whole bunch of nothing happening, a couple of ships came at me and started shooting at me. Finally, something's happening. This firefight drew on for about five minutes or so. So, and then finally, I blew one of them up. And that's when I said, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm satisfied. I blew a ship up. I got my 10 pounds out of this game. Now, before you ask, does this game have anything to do with Elite Dangerous? Elite Dangerous is the sequel to this game. So this franchise still gets games, apparently. And you've been playing a franchise without even knowing it's a franchise. I guess the technology finally caught up with the concept. But I can't call this a bad game. Somebody who's got more patience than I do could probably get some fun out of this. Also, this game was made by a company called Firebird. Yeah, who's your competitor? Mustang Games? Me, I'm a Camaro gamer. Bomb Jack. Okay, this guy is the polar opposite to Bomberman. Instead of placing bombs, you're collecting bombs. And you gotta collect every bomb on the screen. Some of the bombs light their fuses, and when they do that, I don't know, Pac-Man shows his dick or something. What do you want from me? It's a game where you collect all the bombs on the screen. You expect me to know every little thing about every single game I play? Are you ever gonna play this game? No, be honest. Are you ever going to play this game? No, you're not. Why? Because there's better games in the world. Yeah, I can see you in a Discord call. Oh yeah, what are you playing? Oh, I'm playing Call of Duty. What are you playing? Oh, I'm playing Forza Horizon. What about you, Billy? What are you playing? Uh, I'm playing Bomb Jack on the ZX Spectrum. One of your friends is gonna go, yo, man, you okay? That's my review of this game. If you play it, people will ask you if you're okay. Ant attack. You're in an isometric black and white world running away from giant ants. And sometimes you go behind walls and can't see where you're going. The controls are really weird. You had to push these very random buttons on the keyboard to turn yourself left or right, and then you had a separate button for going forward, making this one of the oldest games in the world to use tank controls. This is another one of those stupid games where the enemies go as fast as you do. You've got bombs you can throw at them, but you can accidentally blow yourself up with them. Speaking of turning, the graphics are so primitive it's hard for me to tell which way I'm facing. So I think you're supposed to find the other people in the maze and rescue them, but I have never found one single person. Found plenty of ants, though. I did shoot two ants at one time, and it made me feel pretty good about myself. I've heard some people say that this was their favorite Spectrum game, and all I gotta say is Stockholm Syndrome is real. If you've got nothing else to compare this against, I mean, yeah, I guess. I don't know what you're gonna say. Stu, you were a 90s kid. These games are too old for you. Bruh, I had a 2600 and an NES as a kid. And I gotta say, I would play Pitfall a million million times before I play this shit. I legit feel bad for British people. Maybe that's why they're so mean. They grew up with games like this. Anyway, we still got plenty to go, so let's move on. Now, I can't make a Spectrum video without playing Jetpack. It's the law. Now, anybody that's played Donkey Kong 64 will immediately recognize this game, because this is a rare game. Back when they were called Ultimate Play the Game, they released several games on the Spectrum, some of which people consider to be the best games on the system. This this one being included. And you know what? I hated this game on DK64. I don't hate it now. In fact, after all of the crap that I've played, I would say this is the best game I played for this video. I thoroughly enjoy Jetpack. It's a simple, easy to get into game. You collect ship parts, then you fill the ship with fuel, you get in the ship, and blast off. Now, do it a million times. <laughs> Let's look at another rare game, A Tick Attack. Night Wizard Surf. What the hell's a surf? Isn't that like a politics? thing? Or am I thinking of turf? Is it surf and turf? Whatever, I don't watch the news. Though I was a newsman in the past life. So a tick attack could probably be called a dungeon crawler because you run around all these little rooms looking for keys and there's like secret pathways and alternate routes and stuff. So most of this game will be spent trying to figure out where the hell you're supposed to go. But that's kind of the point. You're supposed
supposed to try to figure out where the hell you're supposed to go. The whole point of the game is exploring. One thing I thought was weird, now all the doors take keys except for the white ones. The white ones will open up by themselves, but they kind of open when they want to. So you got to sit there and wait for them to open up. What is this? This is a vault? It's Vault 1884. I didn't know they went that high. I didn't get very far in this game, but I feel like if I sat down and took some time with it, I could probably play this game to completion. I kind of want to play it on my own time. I think it's got potential. I didn't hate it. Good job, Rare. You're two for two. But here's where they let me down. Underworld, which unfortunately has nothing to do with Kate Beckinsale. Sad. Underworld is a British platformer and it plays like a British platformer. <laughs> It may have the worst jump mechanic I've ever seen in a game in my life. Your jump is this long horizontal shit that you have absolutely no control over, and you keep bouncing against the enemies and they knock you all over the place. If you hit a wall, you ricochet back. If you hit an enemy, you ricochet, hickochet. You just find yourself going out of control 99% of the time you play this game. I don't even know where I'm supposed to go. No matter where I go, I keep ending up in this hole. And then I need to get on these bubbles to make my way back up, but I can't jump on them because I have no control over my jump, and these motherfuckers keep knocking me all over the place. Ah! This sucks 31 flavors of ass. Butterscotch, butter pecan, chocolate, you name it. No matter what I did in this game, I kept ending up in this damn hole. This game is just plain awful. It's like Rare had one or two good developers, and then they had one or two bad developers, and then they made this game. It's hard to believe they went from this to Donkey Kong Country. But at least we can say they greatly improved from this. They do these bad Spectrum games. They do bad LJN games. And then Nintendo says, hey, you want to make a Donkey Kong game for us? And they're like, Bob's your uncle. We'll make it right pretty, we will. And then suddenly they shit out Picassos. And my trope about British games being bad goes null and void. I don't know, man. But I'm thankful for every game that they put out after these. You notice how I'm still stuck in this hole? I wanted you to see how long I played this before I figured out you can't get out of here because the jump mechanics are so bad you're just stuck. Oh well, two out of three ain't bad. This is the last rare game I played, Night Lore. This is an isometric adventure game, and this game apparently did so well back in the day that Rare reused the engine of this game to make other games. Notice how I'm kind of wandering around? You know what I'm doing? I just realized you turn left and right to turn yourself around, you press up to move forward. I don't know why they couldn't have just made it you go the direction you move the joystick, but to be fair, isometric games was a new idea. Holy shit, I turned into a furry. Yeah, your character apparently becomes a werewolf at night, as shown by the moon in the corner. I don't know what that changes, but okay. Oh, I found the vaporwave room. There's rooms in this game where you can't walk on half of the room? There's an invisible wall stopping me here. You think I could walk all the way there to that corner, but I can't. And the jumping, once again, Brits can't jump. When you jump forward, you jump forward a set amount, and you end up overshooting what you're trying to jump on top of. Wait, wait a minute, did you hear something? What the? I guess that got in the recording. Wow, I bet that confused the hell out of you. You checked it, didn't you? I don't know. I feel like this is another one. If I had infinite time to spend just sitting here playing it, I could probably progress in it pretty far and maybe end up liking it. But I just got other games I want to play more, you know? And this is probably the last time I'll ever play this game, to be honest with you. But I can see how people would have thought this game was good back in the day. Jet Set Fucking Willy has nothing to do with Jet Set Radio. It's just a weird coincidence. And it's a sequel to Manic Miner. And I already told you how much I love that game. This is the same game, but just now instead of a bunch of levels, it's one big level. Just what I wanted, a game I don't like made longer. I couldn't get very far in this game because I can't get past this one particular spot. There's this real precision jumping you have to do, and you don't need me to tell you you can't do it. Why? Brits can't jump. The jumping is terrible and clunky in this game too, just like every other game we've played. But at least I got to see the nightmare room where you turn into a pig with wings and you get attacked by flying mother-in-laws and the foot from Monty Python. Other than that, it's Manic Miner just worse. Next is- What?! 
The Duke's a Hazard? Where was this game when I made my video on that? Oh, I remember this game. It was on the Commodore 64 as well. This is the one that has the FBI helicopter shooting missiles at you. Also, Rob Zombie's Dragula is in here for some reason. Crash on the Duke, boys, and fuck Daisy Duke in the ass in the back of my jugular. Jugular? The steering is very unresponsive in this game. I can't get the general to switch lanes for shit. I'm gonna go back to what I said in the first review of this game. What did the Duke boys do that the FBI is trying to murder them? Maybe they found a renewable source of energy in moonshine and the FBI is gonna kill them for it. That was actually a real episode. Hey, there's Roscoe. Oh, I'm gonna get you boys. Go, 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 take you up good, go. What even is this review at this point? Let's move on. I already played this game anyway. Dizzy, the ultimate cartoon adventure. Codemasters. Oh, they make a lot of good racing games. Oh boy, another platform. Former yippee. I know you're tired of hearing me say jump, but jump. Yeah, jump. It's awful. He like does this flip in the air. And again, it's impossible to land exactly where you want to land. Also, I love this sign that used to say danger and now it says dang. Well, we're not going that way. Let's go the other way. Huh. Yeah, I've been playing these games too long. I'm taking a nap after this fucking video. Anyway, not much happens in this game. You get harassed by spiders. You pick up a bunch of weird items that don't do anything. And you can get killed by raindrops. What is it? Acid rain? Damn. I feel like I made that joke before. I'm running out of fresh stuff. Okay, we'll say it's the tears of everybody who played this game. I don't know, maybe you get an umbrella or something later on and you can walk through it, I don't know. My whole opinion of this game is don't know, don't care. By the time I got to this game, I was done and was ready for this shit to be over, like now. Dream Warrior? Oh, that gives me an excuse to play this. So in Dream Warrior, your Master Chief shooting little aliens, as Master Chief does. So you walk around with a weird perspective, you shoot aliens, you're not quite sure you're hitting them, you're not quite sure where you're supposed to stand when you hit them, or shoot at them, whatever, and you run out of places to go extremely quick. And that's where you get to the point where you're going, okay game, what stupid bullshit do I have to do to progress? Well, first of all, this big blue thing in the middle is a door, it don't look like a door, but it is a door. So we can make a little bit of progress. I don't know if this shit on the ground is landmines or items or what it is. One thing I do know is the screen tearing is having a field day with this game. But yeah, you got doors, but you don't know which one of these fucking walls here is an actual door. Isn't this a beautiful color palette? Blue, blue, and more blue. I've got to be completely honest. I have no idea. Oh, the game's over. Okay. Oh, Stu, that's me. I ain't much for Dream War. Warrior, but maybe tonight it'll be gone. Rainbow Islands, the story of Bubble Bobble 2. Let me explain this game. So, you play as the Bubble Bobble characters, but in human form. It's them, but they're human. So... Okay? And you don't blow bubbles, you throw rainbows. Rainbows that you can now jump on top of or walk on top of. These guys are pissing rainbows and shitting sunshine. One trick I was real proud of myself for doing is while you're jumping up and forward, place the rainbow while you're jumping and you'll automatically walk on top of it. And you can keep placing rainbows while you're moving up and like infinitely scroll up. Pretty cool, but pretty reckless. You can get hit easily like that. This game wasn't too bad, actually. I found myself having a good time with this game. Until I got to the first level boss, and I never really was able to beat him. I guess my gamer skills ain't perfect. Other than that, not much to say. It's a pretty straightforward arcade game, and I like it. Let me ask you something. Are you wearing headphones right now? <laughs> Oh my god, I hate this game already. Oh, and it's a Beam software game. Their games suck. They did many of those shitty Tom and Jerry games I reviewed, as well as those crappy Back to the Future games. And this one, Horace Goes Skiing. Well, before Horace goes skiing, he has to go get some skis. But before he gets some skis, he's got to cross the road. So this is basically a combination of Frogger and Ski Free. Shout out to all the 30-year-old boomers who remember Ski Free. And as you can see, I don't know how to play this game. I'm supposed to get in between the flags. It's really hard to turn though. You got a steady momentum that takes you down. I love the noise the game makes when you hit a tree. Ah, my ear canals have been cleansed. Well, when you get to the bottom of the slope, you gotta play the Frogger game again. Your money is considered your lives in this game, and when you run out of money, you can't buy any more skis. 
You can also lose money by getting hit by cars. It's kind of a silly game, and I don't hate it. I appreciate what it's trying to do. And this was apparently a very early Spectrum game. I actually heard that there was a YouTuber who used to use this character in their videos, and the copyright holder of the character Horus had a bunch of their videos taken down. What a bunch of assholes. I hated Beam Software before. I certainly do now. Guys, that would be like, like back in my YouTube poop days. Eric Schwartz taking down my videos because I use the Sabrina animations a whole bunch. Of course, since I don't make any money on those videos, I think it'd be funny as hell. But I digress. I hope that YouTuber recovered from that. As for Horace, he can go eat a Horace cock. Last game. Now, uh, this one was weird. So weird, in fact, I couldn't figure out how to play it. But it was too weird not to show. This is a game called Back to School. <laughs> Lovely. From what I've been told about this game, it's a school simulator. To that I must ask the question, why? Is it the point of video games to get your mind off of school and education? But apparently this is bully before bully was a thing. Basically, all you do is walk around school and the bucket. Oh, ah, oh, my ears. Why does it do that? Nobody wants to hear that shit. But yeah, every time the teachers find you doing something you're not supposed to, they make you write lines. So when you come home from school from having to write lines a thousand times, you can do it at home. I never understood the whole lines thing myself. If you did have to write a thousand lines, let's say, if you had to do that while everybody else is trying to learn well you're gonna miss out on all the schoolwork that you were supposed to be doing so you're not gonna know anything for the tests or anything like that so isn't that the teacher's fault for making you have to do something else while everybody else is learning at that point the parents shouldn't be mad at you they should be mad at the teacher for your ah okay okay ah can't get a word in was this game meant to be as annoying and unfun as possible if so then it's the perfect school simulator now you just have to have that one creepy kid in your class that smokes cigarettes and talks about knives all day. Did y'all have one of those? I certainly did. Now he's 30 and has a mohawk and gets high all the time. Last time I saw him, I was at a gun store. He was trying to sell a gun that still had all the brand new tags on it. After the store owner told him no, he tried to sell it to me. I said, bro, I don't want any gun that's got your fingerprints on it. Man, the people that live in my neighborhood. I've got one more game to show you. I know, I lied. I told you that was the last one well no this is the last one and it's both surprising and non-surprising what it is doom it's doom on the spectrum will you take a look at this i mean you could kind of tell how they pulled it off but the unfortunate thing is it's only one level and there's no enemies but the very fact that this exists is something else i can't imagine what all kind of crazy tricks they had to pull to make this game work and i thought it was a perfect way to end the video but there you go spectra doom and with that our ZX Spectrum adventure comes to a close. We had some good times, we had some bad times, we had some times I wish I would have never made this video, but we got through it together and that's what's important. Unless you clicked off halfway through like a lot of you do. I see you. You have blonde hair. You have funky looking glasses. They don't quite fit your head, but your mama tells you you're handsome because she wants her son to believe that. Your mama's a good person, you know. You should talk to her more. Where am I going with this? Let's get out of here. Bye.